Our first guest tonight is an Emmy and Golden Globe award-winning actress you know from films such as Us and The Invisible Man and television shows such as The West Wing and Mad Men. She stars as June Osborne in The Handmaid's Tale, which returns for its fourth season premiere tonight on Hulu. Please welcome back to the show, Elizabeth Moss. It is so nice to see you, Lizzie. Hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. You were here right before everything came to a stop, and you were on your way. We were talking about last February, you were on your way to start. I imagine you got a fair bit delayed. Yes, we have it. We had a tad delayed, <laughs> about six months. Yeah, just a small six month delay. Yeah. And then yeah. did you, you looped back and you actually came back to New York where you hadn't spent an extended amount of time for a long period of your life, right? Yeah, yeah, I live in New York and uh, it was the longest amount of time I think I've spent here in one chunk since like I was unemployed in my early 20s. <laughs> Probably a slight, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, it must be nicer now to not be unemployed, but this last year, I feel like all of us felt like, oh, if only to be unemployed and outside. I know, exactly, exactly. It wasn't exactly the break uh, I would have loved. <laughs> uh, you spent some time, a uh, couple of cats? Yes, I spent some time with my cats, Lucy and Ethel. Thank you so much for Were they good roommates? Them. The great roommates, fantastic, they're the best. They're I very, wanna, very low maintenance. I want to compliment you because, you know, one of the things I think everybody's doing now is looking back and seeing what they accomplished during this last year. Uh, you started a, a production company, well done. Yeah, I did, thank you. I, uh, I tried to keep myself as busy as possible and it was one of the things I've wanted to do for many years and I finally kind of had the time to in, invest in such a thing, so. Um, I keep getting asked, like, did you pick up a hobby? Like, what did you do? Did you start cooking? Did you start knitting? And, and no, I, I opened up a company. <laughs> well, like I said, it's very impressive. Um, I, I feel this way every time uh, Handmaid's come back because uh, I watch this show. Uh, I love this show. And Thank yet I feel like I forget. And someone was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy it's back. <laughs> and then I start watching. And uh, this picks up exactly where we left off. And uh, once again, life's not great for the handmaids. No, no, <laughs> life's just, life is just not great. It, that, that's what comes with being a handmaid, Seth. Just right. in, in just the basic job itself. Yep. Not great. Right. It's not you like, know? good news, we joined a union. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? We've made some changes. <laughs> yeah, we got. Uh, it's really great. We all, with three weeks paid vacation, which is huge for handmaids. Um, we still have to do that whole like monthly rape thing, but you know, besides <laughs> <just like> that. <laughs> you, um, it's very difficult, uh, and we discussed a lot uh, uh, trying to find a clip for the show, but yes. you don't want to give too much away in a clip. And. No. It was hard to find one, and I want to thank you because you sort of worked overtime uh, to select something from this season that doesn't give too much away. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. It's also obviously a dark show, so you have to pick the right thing. And you guys have a 30-second, you know, maximum, which right. is almost impossible. But I think I did my best in finding something that I feel communicates what this season is about. All right, uh, let's take a look at what Lizzie brought. <laughs> How dare you? People tune into this show for spoilers. I feel like, I feel like it's a win-win situation. You know what I mean? Like people get to see a beautiful cat. Yep. Ethel, some late night exposure, which is good. Now, how does Lucy feel about the fact that Ethel uh, got in the clip and she was not well, to be seen? I, to be fair, because I'm a good cat mom, I sent two clips. I sent one of Lucy and one of Ethel and I left it up to you guys. So I'm safe in this house. Oh, sure. That's the story you'll tell Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, there were two clips. It wasn't my fault. They just picked the other one. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> what about, um, you directed three episodes this year. Yeah. Um, is this, had you, you directed one in the past or, or was this the first no, time? Oh, no, wow. this is the first time I've directed, yeah. And I was supposed to just direct the first uh, episode three and then I ended up directing three episodes in, yeah. during a pandemic. <laughs> was that basically sort of due to, hey, it might be easier if we had fewer uh, people around as opposed to, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. It was, a, it was definitely helpful as a production to have less people and people liked the first episode that I did. So I kind of just put myself up for the job. Um, well, looks like the pandemic's been pretty good for Lizzie Moss. <laughs>
<laughs> you sound so mad. You sound, you sound um, really how did you weird. how did you find it? How did you en enjoy the directing? I loved it. I loved it. It was incredibly uh, it was incredibly fulfilling. It was honestly the most rewarding thing I think I've ever done in my career. Um, I, I loved it so much. My favorite thing was working with the actors, and they're so so incredible. And I developed um, something that I, I, I really loved doing, which was the complete objectification of Max Minghella, who plays Nick. Yeah. And so it, explain this objectification. Well, I, I think it, he's, you know, he's a beautiful man. He's a right. beautiful man. And, you know, there's no denying that. And I just wanted to sort of flip the tables on things. And, I mean, look at him. He's a lot of, <laughs> lot of close-ups when it was left to you. When it was left in my hands, me and my cinematographer, Stuart Biddlecombe, designed scenes and shots to highlight his beauty. And, you know, things on close-ups on his eyes and things on the back of his neck. Yeah, and we noticed uh, you, you were... Uh, <laughs> I, and I will say, I heard you uh, had said he had a really nice neck, and I thought, who has a nice neck? And then I saw this, I'm like, guy's got a good neck. It's a beautiful neck. It's, it's a, a beautiful really neck. neck. And Stuart and I would sit behind the monitor and we're supposed to be very serious and watching this really serious scene. And we'd just be sitting there and be like, oh God, isn't he beautiful? Look at him. <laughs> look at him, he's so handsome. Look at those, look at those eyebrows. God, he's good. Um, one of the things that happened between the third and the fourth season is uh, Margaret Atwood um, had the book The Testaments come out, uh, which takes place in the future, but in this same yeah. uh, world, some of the same characters. Figure you read, which is awesome. Yeah, I read, I loved. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, sort of knowing the future of this timeline, you know, it allows you to look at the characters slightly differently. Um, how yeah. much did you guys take that book into account in the creation of the season, which of course is, is still far uh, before the events of that book? Totally. I mean, Margaret did us a solid and she, she put it 15 years ahead, which allows us to kind of create our own story getting there. But it is really cool knowing kind of, especially maybe somebody like Aunt Lydia, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't read the book, but, you know, Anne and I worked a lot together this season as actors and, and as director actor, and we were able to take what we kind of know is coming and, and bring it into the season for the more eagle eyed viewers or viewers who have read that book. Um, so it, it has been extremely informative. I mean, if anyone can write the end of your story, it should be Margaret Atwood. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, I think we're all lucky uh, that that happened. And I'm so, I genuinely am very happy the show is back. It uh, continues to be such an accomplishment. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time here in the studio. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to see you in person. <laughs> all right. All the best, Lizzie. The first three episodes of The Handmaid's Tale are available now on Hulu.